Hey everybody, I'm Samurai Sam, and today I thought it would be fun to do a little Let's Read. Uh, I recently rediscovered my old stash of Nintendo Power magazines. Well, I mean, I never forgot about them, but I realized just how awesome they are, and I hadn't really looked through them in a long time, and uh, so I thought it would be fun. Well, I've been enjoying reading them again, and I thought it would be fun to do videos on them. Uh, at least I'll try one. This is the first issue I ever had in uh, February of 2001, issue number 141. And so without further ado, let's uh, open her up. We got a Paper Mario on the front. It was just about to be released. I believe it came out that month. Um, some of the advertisements like this are really cool. This is an advertisement to subscribe to Nintendo Power with some bonus gifts for subscribing. I really like how the art, uh, you'll see it extends to the card you send away with here. And it also extends to the second page as well. I like that. Um, of course, Majora's Mask was still fairly new at that time. Uh, another cool advertisement. Interesting to see these prices here. I'm surprised actually Paper Mario was only $50 when it came out because I believe a lot of Nintendo 60 game, a lot of 64 games before that were more than that, if I remember right, when they were first released. Um, so we got our table of contents. Of course, very cool artwork. Um, of course, you start out with Player's Pulse, which is where... You read the fan letters, and then there's uh, fan art from their envelopes all over the borders of the page. It's pretty cool to see. I'm not going to, like, focus on all of them, but you get the idea. Um, there was always, like, a, a prevalent topic of the month whenever they did this. So uh, for this issue, it was, um, let's see, something about how you would um, deal with bad guys or something. How, how would it best take out an enemy worse? So wait. Yeah, just how, did, how would you deal with your favorite villain, basically? Like, if you were trapped in a room with one villain, how would you defeat him? So, you know, a lot of kids were writing into this, so a lot of the answers are, you know, a little bit silly, not really... But, I mean, I mean nothing wrong with that. And there's Letter of the Month, which they highlight one that's especially creative or whatnot, and they're poking fun of here, the video game logic, about how there's only one bathroom in Clock Town. Um, but, uh, yeah, these can be fun, and sometimes Nintendo... Uh, the writers of Nintendo Power wrote some witty replies to the letters. I'm not going to go through all of them because this video is going to be long enough already probably. See, like, just randomly here, top rentals. I don't know why this would be in the uh, player's poll section, but it is. Um, and then uh, something about... Oh, okay. So this is just an update on how they're formatting the magazine. Uh, and then they ask you... They, they uh, mention a topic that they want to feature in an upcoming issue. So they... Uh, Ask, they prompt the readers to write a letter of a certain topic. And then uh, the artist gallery, which they show off what they think is their favorite uh, fan art of the month, which none of these are especially impressive to me in particular, but of course you have to keep in mind these are like probably all kids that are writing, so you can't expect the top-level art there um, or ad. Then uh, Game Watch, which is basically a news section, and of course Game Boy Advance was coming out that year, so there's a lot of Game Boy Advance material. Um, they've got a preview on the uh, Japanese launch, which is really cool. I mean, this was like my first ever glimpse pretty much into like Japanese releases. Um, and uh, this, is, this was actually for me like the first gaming magazine that I ever had for myself. Um, Maybe even the first one I ever really looked through, like, all the way through as well. I don't remember, but um, this this magazine, this very one that I'm holding here, this is my original. Um, like, this was quite a significant moment reading this in my gaming life, more than I even realized at the time. Like, this was the first time I had ever heard of Fire Emblem. Speaking of Fire Emblem, that's really cool. Now, this is like a prototype of Fire Emblem 6. Of course, they completely changed the subtitle to Sealed, the Binding Blade or Sealed Sword or however you want to call it, and... The graphics, the interface for the battles is different, but like you'll see other games here, like here's Advance Wars with its prototype title, Kuru Kuru Kuruin, which uh, Europe got that, but America did not, sadly. Um, but I would later hear about it not much longer in Smash Brothers. Um, other games here, like we never got this horse racing game outside of Japan, and nobody did. Uh, first time I ever heard of Tactics Ogre, that's for sure. First time I ever heard of Golden Sun. Uh, Magical Vacation's a game that didn't leave Japan, if I'm not mistaken. But I see uh, some of the familiar games, too, here as well, like Mario Advance and F-Zero, which turned out to be Maximum Velocity. And then uh, previews of upcoming game White Color games. we got Snoopy Tennis, which supposedly was pretty good. And then, of course, one thing that's interesting about reading this, th these magazines is that you'll see showcased kind of games that really aren't that great, but, like, you don't really hear anybody talk about them. So games like Tech Deck, like, just kind of interesting to see a presentation about them because you really don't see them anymore. 
a uh, little feature on Scooby Doo. Then uh, more news. Let's see. Kirby Tilt and Tumble. It turned out to be a really cool game. Uh, here's an early preview for what turned out to be Cubivore, which at the time here, they're talking about it as a 64 title. Um, let's see. Then we got our, um, these are upcoming games, I believe, on uh, 64 Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance listed here. Uh, and then Nintendo Online, which is, uh, I guess, just showcasing website uh, resources for gamers. Now, uh, this is the part of the section of the magazine where there's plenty of walkthroughs uh, where not complete guides for the games, but you see, starting with a game like Paper Mario here, they introduce you to the game, the mechanics, like the different partners, and um, uh, here's all the different uh, the towns you start in, along with maps, dungeon maps, and everything, and this is really cool and really helpful when you're a kid and you're not really that good at uh, figuring out video games on your own yet. Having stuff like this can really help you get off on the right foot. Sometimes I would lean on a little bit too much and not figure out enough of the game for myself. But um, they really uh, did quite a bit on Paper Mario here, I see. That's a pretty, pretty significant portion of the game, honestly, that's covered. Uh, Mega Man 64, which of course was originally Mega Man Legends on the PlayStation. More maps and cool artwork and stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of skim it. Not going to let you kind of see the artwork. Not really showing off the whole guide here. Again, these guides are longer than you would have think. Um, classified information. This is fun. This is uh, the cheat code section. I always really enjoy these as a kid. Even reading about cheats for games that I had uh, not played or didn't own. Just it was fun reading about them and the different things you could do. Um, and then they would also have like a code cop, which uh, showed off uh, bogus codes that were rumored on the internet. Uh, we got one about Ocarina of Time right there. Uh, and then we got, uh, like, I enjoyed, like, just the names of the cheats were amusing sometimes. Help me gives you full health. Um, then they gave Spider-Man a little speech bubble here, uh, asking you, Spidey has no need for, I'm trying to get the focus on, there we go. Old-fashioned way, radio to super promise. Yeah, there was a lot of personality in the Nintendo Power Magazine, and I really appreciated that then and now. Uh, now here uh, was a little preview on Pokemon Stadium 2. Now, unfortunately... Uh, this is where the poster was. Now, the poster comes with a couple of pages of content about Pokemon Stadium 2 on the back, and then on the front, of course, is the poster that you hang in your wall. As a kid, I ripped this out and hung, it, hung this up in my room, and sadly, uh, when it was time to take it down, for whatever reason, I don't remember, I just it got thrown out, so sadly, it doesn't exist in this issue anymore. Star Wars Episode 1 Battle for Naboo, which I wound up getting when I was a kid. I really liked Star Wars. I even liked Episode 1 back then. not going to lie. I was a kid. I didn't know better. But, um, yeah, Battle for Naboo was... Battle for Naboo is a pretty decent game. I definitely use this little uh, section here as a kid to help me out with it a little bit, where the secrets are and stuff. More maps, more maps, 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 maps. Then uh, Player's Choice uh, here shows off uh, the re-releases coming out that month, apparently, or in the past few months. I don't know what the time frame is there. But like uh, then they showcase some of the games that are getting re-released, like Perfect Dark here, and just a little bit of secrets that were probably covered in a past issue, honestly. But um, yeah, little useful little tips for Pokemon Stadium here. I believe I used those. Uh, tips for Pokemon Snap. Then uh, Smash Brothers. I can't imagine this is the first time that they told you how to unlock these characters, considering Smash Brothers had already been out for, like, I think almost two years by this point. But um, yeah, they're showing you again, if you hadn't seen it before. Uh, DK64. Tell you how to get like 100 100 percent completion here, stuff like that. And then a uh, little uh, feature on Magi Nation, which is a game you don't really hear about that often, but apparently it's pretty good. I actually own it, but uh, I haven't sat down to play it yet. I de do intend to do that at some point. But my backlog is pretty big. Um, and then uh, more ads. Uh, the Polka Center, yeah, this is a thing that was a long running feature in Nintendo Power. Just a whole section. Uh, Dedicated to Pokemon, and here we got, uh, this is the last time, I believe, that they, uh, yeah, Gold and Silver Special Coverage, this is when they're previewing the upcoming Gen 2 Pokemon, so for a lot of kids, probably even me, this was the first time seeing some of these Pokemon here, and I was a Pokemon nut back then, so uh, I'm sure I ate this up quite a bit, um, and some Q&A about Gold and Silver here. Yeah, actually, by this time, I already had Gold and Silver, so this was likely not the first time I had seen these Pokemon, actually. So, um, but still, uh, definitely love to see all this stuff. Um, 
Of course, Pokemon Gold and Silver had already been out for like a year, I think, when this issue came out. Not Probably not quite that long, but close. And this is actually... My first Nintendo Power issue was actually the last time they ever featured a um, Gen 1 team in the Poke Center. Um, after this issue, it was all Gen 2 teams for a while, and then probably eventually Gen 3. Um, and then this team here, um, it's a mono-normal team, and it's not really that great. Like, I mean... You wouldn't really actually ever put Fire Blast on a Tauros, for example, but I, this guy was just going for coverage, but still, like, I mean, Ice Beam is going to hit super effectively most of the things that Fire Blast will anyway. But um, still, you know, some quality Pokemon there, though. You know, Chansey's obviously really good, and Tauros is too, and Persian can be really good, you know. Um, then, uh, uh, Lovely Edition, actually, I, I have this. My, my parents got this uh, Pikachu and Pichu Game Boy Color for my sister, and it wound up in my possession when my sister didn't care anymore. Uh, and here we got this really cool here, Gold and Silver comic, which is actually, like, attached to the magazine. It's not as high as you can see as a regular page, it's, so it's kind of like a, a bonus feature, but really cool, like a, a whole comic issue here. Well, maybe not quite full-length standalone comic, but, you know, decent bang for basically no buck. Uh, and then we got... Uh, Here's a Might Magic 2, again, a game that you just don't hear about for Game Boy Color. Like, a lot of Game Boy Color versions of popular series and franchises don't really get talked about because a lot of them are obsolete. I would imagine this game is obsolete compared to other Might and Magic games now. But I don't actually know that. Feel free to tell me if I'm wrong. Now, this is an interesting case here. Type Time Quest is a game that was planned, but I believe this actually never came out in America. I think it came out in Europe only. If I'm not mistaken, I know it came out in Europe. I was just before filming this, I was looking up to see if the American version was actually released, and apparently it was not. So they did this full feature on this game, and Americans wound up not even being able to play it. Unless import, they imported it, but 11-year-old me wasn't going to import that. Uh, and then every uh, issue they had a contest, so this is a contest to win E3 and Game Boy Advance. This was actually my first time probably ever seeing the GameCube. I believe I never even heard of the GameCube before I... Um, had uh, subscribed to Nintendo Power, and I uh, see I did not for some reason send fill this out and send it away. Um, well, interesting how they denote Xbox with a dash there. It's, you don't see that very often. Um, then you got uh, yeah, this shows its age a little bit, uh, but it's kind of neat to see these old contests here. And then over here, oh, this is if you want to order back issues. So like if you missed out on an issue or you subscribed and you want to see past Nintendo Powers, you can order them here for a little fee. I never did that, but that's a thing you can do. Um, I believe I did actually enter a couple of the contests, but not like every every month. Uh, Mario Tennis on Game Boy Color. So the 64 version was already out at this time. The Game Boy Color version came a little bit later. There's Waluigi. Um, and they kind of teach you how to play and everything. Of course, the Game Boy Color Mario Tennis is very different from the 64 Mario Tennis. It's more... Uh, I don't want to say RPG, but like more like you build up your character and kind of take them through a whole campaign instead of like just a simple tournament. Here they show you how to transfer to the 64 game here. And here's an ad for, what is this? Oh, Hercules. Yeah, some game you never hear about anymore. Probably not that good. Then we got um, Counselor Corner, which is uh, frequently asked questions from readers about how to progress in certain games. This, um, I never really knew much about Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie back. Well, I mean, I was aware of it as a kid, but I had never played it back then. Uh, I didn't play Banjo Kazooie until t and Banjo Tooie until 2014, believe it or not. And boy, I wish I had done that sooner because very fun games. Uh, World is not enough. Donkey Kong Country Game Boy Color version. This is not Super Nintendo. This is Game Boy Color, uh, which was pretty impressive port at the time, but it quickly became dated when the GBA version came out. Okay, why would you ever have to ask this? How do I defeat Naughty? Why would anyone? not be able to figure out how to defeat Naughty. I mean, has, has this person played Super Mario Brothers? Don't you know that you're supposed to jump on enemies' heads? I mean, why would you not try that? And that just kind of baffles me that of all the bosses they could have put here, why Naughty? Like, goodness gracious. Um, Q&A, these are just um, some quick Q&As right here. Um, not dedicating a whole uh, section of the page to them. Uh, but uh, yeah, Rocket Robot on Wheels had apparently just come out at that time. Game Boy Go Go, when they feature the new Game Boy Color games, uh, Ninja. This game is oh, Return of the Ninja. Okay, I didn't, I didn't see the black text there that said Return of the, but uh, yeah, it's not simply called Ninja. In fact, um, you know, just a little uh, 
showing off the game a little bit. Not quite a guide, but a little more like a little preview. Uh, again, some games here that you just don't hear about anymore because they're either not that good or whatever. Uh, Animorphs. Now, this is a game back when I got this magazine. I was reading the books often. I actually really enjoyed the books. They're they're very good. Um, and I wound up getting this game, and it's really not very good, honestly. Um, I don't have it anymore, even. Sergeant Rock in the front line. Like, again, I, I enjoy just seeing some of these obscure, kind of funny-sounding Game Boy Color games that just no one talks about. Like, Sergeant Rock on the front line. And never would have, like, thought of... Never probably would have encountered that game without... Uh, this Nintendo Power issue, but uh, Action Man, could you get a more uncreative... Oh, Search for the Base X. It's a pretty uh, unremarkable title right there. Wild Thornberries. Of course, license games are very common. Uh, what's this? Oh, Power Spike is a volleyball game. Boston Move Millennium. Ta Mary Kate and Ashley. And then the reviews section. All right, then they, uh, of course, review the games coming out that month with a little summary of what the game is, and then a few of the reviewers, well, there's always five reviewers who give their score, and uh, they few of them can give their comments if they decide to. Of course, Paper Mario got very good scores. It's a fantastic game. And they give, of course, a little info about the game on the side here. Um, I like this presentation that they do. We got Star Wars Episode One, which scored pretty well. Deserves it, probably. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe four is a little bit high. It's probably more like a out of uh, five, probably most at most a three and a half. But it's a good game. Uh, they weren't too thrilled at Mega Man Legends. As a as a kid, I actually took a pen and like wrote in a little half there because I would like take the score and like average it out. And like sometimes what they have here is not quite the same as the average of the five scores given. So like as a kid, I was like, ah, I'm gonna correct them. But anyway. Uh, so, like, here, like, I completely, like, scribbled this out and just wrote a four. Apparently, they really like uh, Tom and Jerry and Mouse Attacks. Um, lowest score I got was a three. I have no idea if it's actually good or worth playing now, but they liked it back then. Mario Tennis got absolute perfect five. That's kind of a surprise to me. Um, I guess if tennis is your thing, then it's a good one. I remember trying this, and uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I didn't really know what I was doing that much, but it felt a little repetitive to me. Like, you have to grind a lot or whatever, but maybe it's maybe I'll give it another shot sometime. Animorphs um, really doesn't deserve a three, honestly. Jill has it right. This game is bad. It's just not very good, sadly. Um, and uh, here's my Magic 2. Pretty ho-hum. Then we got uh, Return of the Ninja. Again, ho-hum game. Sergeant Rock, as I pointed out before. Kind of an amusing title. I kind of enjoyed hearing about it, but it's not a good game, clearly. And I'm sure if I looked up popular opinion on the internet, it would be much the same. Um, and then over here, there's a... Uh, they can't fully feature every game coming out in a given month, so they kind of summarize uh, the lesser, the not-so-high-profile releases. And actually, not all of them are bad, clearly. Like, Busta Boom Millennium gets a 4.5. That's a pretty high score. Um, Mary-Kate and Ashley Pocket Planner, believe it or not, is a 4. But, of course, um, you know, they're, they're ranking it for what it is. It's a, not like an actual game. It's like a, a little planner, which, of course, is long obsolete today. But for young girls in 2001, yeah. I'm sure it was probably a decent pickup. So Nintendo Power is recognizing that, and I respect that. Then down here, uh, this is pretty cool. Maybe they should put this at the beginning of the review section, but it's kind of a guide to how it works. Like, they list all their uh, reviewers, and each reviewer lists, like, their favorite genres in order. So, like, you know uh, if a given reviewer is giving an opinion on a certain game, you can look here and see, oh, well, uh, Jason doesn't normally like sports games, so maybe he's giving the sports game a low score because he just doesn't like sports games that much. So... That's kind of a neat little thing that they do there. Um, got your USRB ratings and everything. Now we're getting to the end now. This is coming next issue, uh, what you can expect in next month's magazine. And, uh, of course, plenty of Pokemon CM2. That got me really hyped when I was a kid. I was full-blown Pokemania at that point. Um, then I, of course, have this issue, and, you know, maybe I'll do a video on that if I feel like it or if, and or if someone wants me to. Um, so what if Cigarette has told the truth? What is this? Seriously, is this like a... Anti-cigarette ad on the back of a Nintendo Power? I guess it is. Yeah, it really is. Um, I don't see this advertising anything. I wonder if that website, thetruth.com, I wonder if that's still around. But yeah, that's not kind of what I expected to see. I don't remember that at all. But clearly, it's there. Insider info for ordering player's guides, I guess. I really enjoyed player's guides when I was a kid. Sometimes what I would do is um, actually just go to a store. If I didn't want to buy it, I would just like peek in one of the player's guides on the shelf and find what I wanted. Then the, the back edge of the issue, the back side of the issue, as you'll see here, is severed because I was a kid. I didn't fully take care of everything. 
Uh, an ad for Magi Nation, which we saw in the magazine itself. Oh, this actually unfolds. That's kind of neat. Magi Nation also had a collectible card game, which I don't think lasted very long. Um, and I guess that's what this is advertising here, an expansion for that card game. And then that's the back cover is a Dr. Pepper ad. And so, yeah, that's Nintendo Power Volume 141. Um, yeah, very uh, significant uh, magazine in my life. The first ever gaming mag that I owned and uh, introduced me to a lot of games and series that uh, I was finding out for the first time. And uh, I got Nintendo Power for a few years after this, and I always really enjoyed it. And I'm just now rediscovering them, and hope you enjoyed watching this little video going through it. Uh, and uh, uh, Have a great rest of your day, and this is Samurai Sam signing off.